Okay, this is our discussion of Taylor's, that's Christopher Taylor's, How to Understand a Poem. Now, I've highlighted in purple the passages that we're going to focus closely on. But here at the beginning of this article, you'll see the title, How to Understand a Poem, a little picture of the author, Christopher Taylor, and the date, March 29th, 2019. The article is about 16 pages in length, and I've included an outline, and there's also a summary with it. I've started with the outline, just so you can see the whole bit of advice that Taylor gives for reading a poem. It falls into four parts. Part one is just reading the poem for basic meaning. Part two, determining the subject, what it's about, and the context, if there's any historical context or something that you need to know in order to really get the poem. Um, that's sort of the basic meaning, part two. Part three focuses on the style of the poem, like how is it written? Because poetry isn't just about the ideas, it's also about how the ideas are written. The word choices are especially important, line breaks, metaphor, and other poetic devices, which we will discuss. And part four is sort of making sense of those literary devices in the context of the poem, like figuring out how the poet's using them, why the poet's using them that way, and how it sort of fits in with the purpose of the poem or meaning or the significance. There's some little links here to the sections in this article. If you ever want to skip ahead to find something, you just click on the link. And then here with this purple is the beginning of the article. And it's highlighted in purple. Uh, which means I'm going to focus especially on it because it has something in there that I'd like to explain about poetry. So the first part, it starts as an art form, and it is an art, like painting or music, uh, but it's an art in language. As an art form, poetry has a unique style and form compared to other types of writing. So it's different than a novel or a newspaper article. A novel might tell a story, a newspaper article might give you some facts. They're usually written in a more, especially the newspaper article, straightforward fashion to just communicate the ideas or the facts. But a poem is not going to be a straightforward. It's sort of compressed thought, but it also tries to capture things that you otherwise would have difficulty capturing, like feelings. I feel sad. I feel sad doesn't really capture what sad feels like. Whereas in poetry, you can put together an image of gray or dark or something that captures the sadness, fogginess, or other more complex ideas can be captured in poetry through language. It also has deliberate line breaks, like where you break off, leaving a word just hanging in the middle by itself might place more emphasis on it. Sound patterns, they can have like rhyme or uh, alliteration, which is repetition of sounds like the dodo does dance um, and rhythm as well like that how it create like song actually music is a form of, it can often be poetry um, and that makes it really different from other kinds of writing and it also makes it different in the ways that you go about understanding it you don't expect it to be quite as simple in its explanation so you have to sit and you have to figure out both the literal what does it literally say and the figurative what might be the different ranges of possible meanings that the poet's trying to communicate to you through that literal statement. And then you have to look at how a good poem, these two should interact, should work together. There shouldn't be like a clash between the meaning and the, 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 the way it's written. Unless the clash is the purpose. Like you could have a very sweet sentiment but expressed in a really harsh form and that's the point is the poet's trying to say that something that's sweet could actually be said harshly. Music does that sometimes too, with sort of really sarcastic or critical uh, language being expressed in sort of a sweet music, which captures the, the conflict. In part one, just read the poem, and best to read it out loud, because it's often written for the ear. So you should try to hear the poem and feel the sounds of the words in your mouth, because there could be harsh sounds or soft sounds, and those will influence how you experience the, the meaning of the poem. Read the poem at least 
three times and really pay attention to every word because poems are highly compressed. They're not as long as a novel. They're short, but they can have sort of a great deal of depth. So you really need to look at it first for just, say, basic meaning, second perhaps for sound, and then third perhaps for sort of metaphor or complex passages. Read the whole poem. I, I mean, obviously you always want to read the whole of everything that you're assigned, but especially with a poem, if you miss even one line, it can be like a riddle where you've missed the punchline or the twist. So you have to read the whole thing from beginning to end. The title as well, sometimes titles are significant, sometimes they're not, but often they are. Um, so you wanna pay attention to that. As with any other reading that you're doing, take notes if you don't know a word, look it up in a dictionary. If there's a historical reference you're unfamiliar with, you should look it up because it wouldn't be in the poem if it weren't significant. So when they look into looking at the, the literal meaning, consider the title, we've already discussed that. Identify the main subject, what's the poem about? So who is speaking, why are they speaking, what are they saying, Is it has it have a setting, does it have character? Try to figure out what's happening in the poem. Sometimes nothing is particularly happening, it's just capturing a feeling or a mood but other times there's actually kind of a little story encapsulated in the poem. So after you've read the poem several times, try to identify the subject and answer that question, what or who is the poem about? Sometimes it's a what. Determine the key situation in the poem. If there is a situation, something, a setting or something happening or a plot as it were, um, notice references to literary historical events. If there's a reference to another literary work, like Shakespeare's works, or a historical event, like the Civil War, you should look at that and sort of try to figure out what it's doing in the poem. Sometimes you, it can be helpful to do research on the background of an author. Um, in some cases, who the poet is can be important to the meaning of the poem. Other poets, not so much. Um, it, it really depends on the poem, so it's helpful to look. Make sure that when you're using secondary sources and you're drawing on ideas or passages or phrases or even word choices from those, that you reference those if you use them in your own writing and include a works site page. Look up the meanings of words we've already covered, the style and the form, how it's written, Consider the verbs, are they powerful verbs like slash and burn? Are they pretty words like bathed, heard? Notice the sound and the rhythm. What does it sound like when you read it out loud? How is it sectioned off? You should pay close attention to where line breaks are. The stanzas, there's, there's lines and line breaks and then there's groupings of lines and stanzas in poetry. Notice that when you're citing a poem in an essay, you want to cite it by line number instead of page number uh, because each line in a poem is really important. Also how the line breaks. If it ends on a word, that word is left dangling at the end of the line and you're gonna get special focus on it. You want to notice where the poet's broken off the lines. Sometimes the line breaks in the middle of an idea. Sometimes it breaks at the end of an idea and that also is significant. The mood of the poem. Is it creepy? Is it sad? Is it dramatic? Is it friendly? Is it serious? Is it thoughtful? You know, what kind of mood is the poet using? Also tone, happy, sad, critical, distant, um, ironic. And the form, is it perhaps a sonnet? Is it got a rhyme scheme? Or does it not have a rhyme scheme? Is it free verse that the poet is just writing without any particular quote unquote form? Um, you wanna look at that as well. Figurative the meaning of the poem is gonna depend on all of those. You probably already know that some of the most important uh, devices used in poetry are metaphors, which is comparison of two unlike things, like I'm a chicken, I'm obviously not literally a chicken, but it captures the idea that I'm scared like a chicken or I'm a lion, I'm courageous like a lion. Uh, similes are comparisons using like or as, I am like a flower. 
Um, imagery is when you paint a sort of picture using words so that it brings up a little scene or a, 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 an image in your mind. Um, so those are sort of some of the primary uh, figurative language use, but there's also a lot of other uh, kinds of figurative language which we will explore in activity number two. Uh, read the first and the last lines of any piece of writing especially closely. That's essays, that's novels, that's poems. Usually those first and last lines will, will have some special punch, perhaps, usually. I think, I think some writing instructors talk about the hook that is the lead into something and also the lead out, the closing. Same thing in movies, right? You want to catch their attention and you want to cap things off. Uh, at the very end of reading the poem, try to sum everything up. Try to perhaps write down what does the poem mean to you. That will sort of help you. When you're writing, you really have to think through your ideas, so it will help you to sort through that. Most important, keep in mind there is no one right way to interpret a poem. Your way, as long as you can support it using evidence from the poem, your way is exactly what the poet's looking for.